But let's get to probably the most evilest of evil out of all Obviously, of Manfred von Karma. Oh, my word. What is there to say about Manfred other than... Well, let's see, my experience when I first saw him... I'm pretty sure I said this in a post... Can I punch him? He's such a douchebag. He's a jerk of the week. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, but unlike Nayuda, as we said this before, I I like hating Manfred. Like that is such a strange phrase. Well, to he's say. enjoyable as a villain. Like straight up, he's introduced. You know he's evil. You know he's the bad guy. But at the same time, I we don't use phrases like, oh, I love Manfred. Like, no, I say, I'm like, no, I hate Manfred. He's a character you love to hate. Yeah, yeah, I love to hate him. Yeah. Like, he's he is such a perfect villain in, like, how smart he is, how conniving he is, how manipulative he is, and how underhanded and, and, and just... And ultimately, the way you know that he treats uh, Edgeworth and the way... Because he used Edgeworth as nothing but a revenge scheme against Gregory. So petty. Like, if you want a, the pettiest character in Ace Attorney, Manfred von Karma, he murdered Gregory, Gregory Edgeworth just because... Over a penalty. Over a penalty. He didn't lose a case, but, oh, my perfect career was marred. So he murders Gregory Edgeworth, takes in, um, you know, Miles, doesn't, he doesn't adopt him or anything, he just brings him in to mentor him and, and warp him into a prosecutor just like him. Just basically spit all over the image of Gregory. Just As, basically like, 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 I killed you, I'm taking in your son, and I'm raising him basically to be exactly like me. And, but even then, he doesn't just teach him, he also had him prepped to be used as a scapegoat just, just in case. Just in case he had to. So, like, as for the murder of Gregory Edgeworth, like, just in case. Like, and just the way he treats Edgeworth, too. Like, you know he never viewed Edgeworth as a son. True, he said moments like, he's like, and after I took you in and raised you as if you were my own. And I'm like, please. He was nothing more than a scapegoat, a pawn, and just another person you can put on your scoreboard to say, oh, see, look at that perfect record, that's an extension of me. Like, you never viewed him as your own child. That's why his name is still Miles Edgeworth. Like, you chose to take him in as a student and nothing more. You never cared about him. It's like, in, and even when Edward talks about him, and especially all the descriptions when you play as him, he always refers to him as my mentor. mentor. And, you know, so, you know, he never, he never had a relationship with, you know, with Miles. And it's so cold that he spent, what was it, 15 years? 15 years. And he never once actually treated him like with any kind of real respect. Well, think about it. This is fresh after his father's murder. You take a kid in, you'd think, oh, like, well, somebody would help me get over my trauma. Like, no, like, a lot of Edward's childhood traumas still stick with him to this day. Like, he still, he blacks out in the middle of an earthquake. He still cannot go in an elevator. Like, he will, like, hoof himself all the way up all those staircases. And he lives on a very high floor in his prosecution office, as you find out in the investigation game. And I'm like, like these are childhood traumas that stuck with him for years. And yeah, Manfred didn't give a flying crap about any of it. No. He just molded him to a prosecutor and nothing more. And it's just, it's just despicable because then you, this is when you really start feeling sorry for Edgeworth because you find out this is the man who trained him. No, and it's the same with Francesca, and you yeah. feel like, you feel sorry for her, because then you realize at times, especially at the end of the first game, when she didn't, I mean the first game, the second game, when she didn't understand what Phoenix and Edwards were talking about when they were talking about the truth and blah blah blah, because she's all just like, Phoenix Wright, why are you smiling? You lost. And it's just so lost on her, because all, it's all her father ever warped her into thinking that was important. Winning. Winning. And you could tell, like, she was so confused, and it just, like, and you, like, that's you, all he ever did was just use these children, warp them, and just treat them like pawns on a chessboard. You know, the, I'm not, now I, I think I just realized something. I think one of the reasons why we liked Francisca so much is because we already knew how um, Manfred treated Edgeworth, so when we get her, we know that she's already gone through all that horrific, you know, stuff from... Manfred, so we are already kind of feel. The only difference is this is his actual child. His actual child, which makes you feel even more sorry because he did warp her into this. So, because you distorted... think, because at first you think, well, maybe he was at least 
nicer probably to his daughter considering, you know, Edgeworth was never his kid and obviously he was the son of the man that he just despised. And so it made sense why, even though it's absolutely despicable and horrible, why would you ever? But then again, if you're a despicable, horrible person like Man from Brunk Karma. But you would think that at the very least... His own flesh and blood... Would get a little bit more... care? Nope. And you see that even more so in the flashback case in Investigations, where Manfred is just totally fine with pitting Man, um, Miles and uh, well, Francisca against well, each other. What was even interesting, when I was looking back on it too, whenever Francisca comes in, he's kind of a little bit flippant with her. Like, he's just like, whatever, do what you want. Like, I mean, you could argue that, okay, that was probably an extension of why she kind of, like, couldn't handle things going her way. He probably was just like, whatever do you want. But he almost treated her like a bother. Like... He, he was more concerned with Edgeworth's first case than he was with Princess... Because of it's another mark on him. Like, like, ah, Edgeworth wins his very first case, it'll make me look good, and blah, blah, blah. Here comes Francisca, comes running in, demanding he wants to do the thing. He's like, yeah, whatever, do what you want, I don't care. Like... This is your child! That also brings up a question. What woman ever wanted to procreate with him? And why isn't she in the picture? We never hear well, anything. Well, why isn't she in the picture? I'm looking at Manfred von Karma, and I understand why she is in the picture, but I'm wondering why she didn't take Francesca with her out of the picture. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, there's a lot of questions in There's that. a lot of, like, disturbing questions. Like, I mean, I don't want to know Manfred's backstory, but anything I want to know about the past always ties back to Edgeworth and Francesca, especially yeah. Francesca. Because you don't you don't need a backstory for Manfred. Like, you, you see him a bit in some flashback elements in cer certain parts of the and story. And he's a dick. And he's a dick. You don't need it... Because he's, he's one of those be, characters who is just always bad. Well, I can that see would him be as like a, asking a backstory for, like, Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Gaston was always a jerk, and then as time went on, he turned into a more horrible person. So people were like, well, would you want, like, to see a flashback of, like, Man from Okama, how he was, like, in his earlier days of prosecuting? I'm like, no, probably. Because he's going to be exactly the same, but with but, less gray hair. But, like, yeah. well, I'm probably less, um, evil, because he didn't murder somebody, probably. And I'm like, but still, like, he probably was a horrible, arrogant person who just always assumes everything must go his way, and he's absolutely better than everybody else and then you give that kind a person like that a, a narcissist you give a narcissist power and obviously they just get worse and worse and worse yeah. and that, that was like like we see that in beauty of the beast gaston's a narcissist and as time went on like like gaston was just worse and worse and worse and especially when things didn't go his way he just got worse and worse and worse and that was the same with manfred it didn't go his way he got a penalty rather than you know a perfect win Murder somebody over it. Yeah. And it just... And, and Manfred's backstory is easily discernible just from the context of his character. You don't need anything explicitly stated about him because we already know... Sometimes well, a chair is just a chair and an evil douchebag is an evil douchebag. Yeah. So, you know, he's... And he's not sympathetic at all. Like, all the other prosecutors, even Gadot, are all, they in all. some ways, have some sympathetic, you know, parts to it. That's why finding out Goddard's backstory, you understand why he's bad. Manfred, he's just bad. You you know why. He, and, there, and, there, and, there's no, and there's no justification for it. Godot, at least, I mean, granted, I'm not saying it justifies what Godot did, but you, you understand why he became that way. Manfred, I, I don't... The, the, no cool motives, just murder. It's just murder. <laughs> he's just a petty despicable, Sociopath. selfish, narcissistic human being who's just, who has a superiority complex of the highest caliber. Uh, he's very memorable in that regard, though, because of how, just how despicable he it's is. It's like, I remember even playing through the game once and going into the, um, and by the time I got to investigations, his finger waggle was so ingrained as hatred. When I saw Edgeworth do that, I was just like, like no! <laughs> so it, it's funny seeing that because even though he appeared in one case and I think that's one of the reasons why he was also enjoyable as a villain like compared to Neyuda who you saw over multiple cases Manfred had one case but at the same time you realize this is the man behind the man this, this is, is the man, man that made Edgeworth so right. then you were like it, it all felt like it was leading to that and then and you're just like oh and then he's the prosecuting that one case and yeah he's totally willing to prosecute Edgeworth 
Not even a single bit of hesitation on it. No, nope, no hesitation. It just she's just like, well, I, w I won't hesitate, B. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, just oh, he's so despicable, so despicable. Oh, yeah. I hate you, but I like that I hate you. It's a weird thing yeah. to say, but oh. And, you know, that, that's that's the unique things that villains uh, position that they have is that you can enjoy hating them because of how despicable they are, and that's something else. Such a yeah. great villain how despicable he is how smart he is and the satisfaction you get by beating him but you oh it just it was so wonderful when i first played it i just remember because i remember when i was playing it again for the like reliving it i think to myself i'm like oh i remember when i beat him it's mm. still just as yeah. wonderful as the first time it's just, just so wonderful it's yeah, like, bah, take. and he's bashing his head and then i'm literally there and i'm like take that <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like yes I'm like oh it's so great and it's just like Suck on that, suck on that, suck on that, Manfred. Oh, it was wonderful. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, I mean, that's really all you need to say about Manfred. He's, he's not that complex of a character, but... Then, then, okay. The next one we want to talk about, we said we'd get to him, is this is the one we like the least. Now, we don't hate hate. him, but we don't love him. It's Clavier. I just... I'm going to bring this up again because if I mentioned it earlier. You want to know one of the things I really, really love about Clavier? His theme song. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And it's got so much personality. So much energy. You get the whole rock theme. The whole theme of a rock star prosecutor. Like, it's just... Like, yeah, as you said, it has so much energy, and I'm like, it's got so much personality to it. You know what I don't like about Clavier? The fact that it doesn't have much personality. Yeah. And this is one thing that I've, I honestly never quite thought about why, I, when I was playing Apollo Justice, I didn't like Clavier. I didn't hate him. I didn't like him. I just felt so apathetic towards his character that I, I always said he was my least favorite, but someone asked this of me. I ended up writing up this huge... You know, now we've had, in fact, funnily enough, the one that we're the most apathetic to, I think I had the longest conversation with you in private, yes. it was about Clavier. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I, I think you and I talked about that just after I posted that, because you and I were had been sort of talking about that. Well, because I was telling you also about my plans in my fanfic, because yeah. I'm going to do a lot of things of what I wish they could have done with Clavier. Yeah, and it's one of the things with Clavier is that when you look at him, he's got a great design. Oh, very he's, good. He's got a great like his whole, the theming of his process, you know, his being a prosecutor, his gimmick is that he's a rock star. He he yeah, is in a rock band part time. Yeah. Like I think that is hilarious. Like a prosecutor that's also a rock star. So you would think that would lead to some amazing jokes. And he's so forgettable in a lot of ways. I can... Like I was trying because when he was talking about memorable moments. I'm trying to Most remember. Most of the moments occur from either interactions with other characters. And I would go, okay, yeah, characters have memorable moments when they interact. But it's more of the reactions the other characters have. Yeah. As opposed to Clavier himself or anything he said. Or it's when other characters are talking about Clavier when Clavier's not around. Like whenever Athena mentions how Apollo always gets so prickly whenever Clavier comes up. And I'm just like, oh, that's funny. Apollo still can't stand Clavier. Yeah. And I'm like, or whenever... Um, you meet Emma, and then they are all like, oh, so about that new prosecutor, and then she's just sitting there like, ugh, she's like, that glimmer is fop, no, 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 like, and then she's just like Snack munching it. on her food, and it's just so funny, because if, you all know Emma from Rise from the Ashes, so she was once this really perky girl, and to see a perky girl like her, to actually can't stand somebody, and so you would think that, oh, judging from those characters, like, reactions to that character, he must be a pretty, at least <laughs> hilariously insufferable guy, right? And <laughs> well, and it's weird because in some they they have him be like, of course, you know, antagonistic to Apollo because you know that's just how they do it with the prosecutors. But but he's, he's never antagonistic enough, like um, like Francisca. She's not. He's not like. Well, yeah, he's not hostile, but he's not condescending like Edgeworth was, or Edgeworth still can be. I mean, he he has these like insults, he, he, like he calls he, he calls Apollo air forehead, which I don't know why he gets so obsessed about the forehead. His forehead. Yeah, but other characters mention that, like um, I think Aura, 
whenever she was hitting on Apollo and like you talk to her and she's just like, yeah, he's got a handsome forehead. And I'm like, again with the forehead. It's like, and it's so ridiculous, but it's like, and he, but you know, his insults at, um, at Apollo and even other characters just, they're, they're not, they're not big enough. It's like, it's weird because it almost felt like they were scared of making him too unlikable, but they didn't want him to be too likable well, because, you know, you prosecutors are supposed to be, have mean moments and you, you want to beat them. And, and even they, they just kept having it. Like, I'm like, we were like, they're like, yeah, they, they have, they, 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 they were have, halfway with everything. About they half ate him. Yeah. And, and it's and I, and I do love the game Apollo Justice. It's yeah. a great game. The, the one weak part of it is is Clavier. Yeah, and one of the things that the it, it really speaks volumes. When I was thinking of the most memorable moments I have, there was this one part where you meet him at his office, and he sort of kind of helps you out. But I can't remember anything. I can't remember he said. any of his lines, but I do remember he does get a little excited when you start talking about. His guitar, because then he loves talking about music, and right. I'm like, okay, yeah, and, and that's music something. Thing. That's something that you notice though. He's like this perfectionist when is it with his music. He's a sure whatever when it comes to his prosecuting, prosecution. which is that's funny. His hobby is something he's just like so adamant about. Whereas his his job, job. he's just he's kind of flippant about. Yeah, it's like when it comes to like w w that one guy was it Darren? Yeah, Darren. Yeah. He's like when he, he when he, people call. Yeah, when, when he when he messes up, Clavier loses. It. He's just like he you gets, have to be perfect. We have to get this music perfect. And he's and like he, that, angry and like I have never seen Clavier actually get like that angry before that, at that point in that game. And that anger is that that's what really like that was interesting. That was the meanest he ever got with his. It was when his music was being messed with that is interesting if they really I'm like, it never really comes up again it's like and that's something that really kind of bugs me about his character it's like these things that the, the interesting parts of him are never really elaborated on and he just feels like he's but like you'll get little snippets of it yeah like you would think especially the biggest important thing the main villain of the game his older brother yeah he's the younger brother of the main villain he, who's apollo's mentor and he was used Manipulated. Clavier was used and manipulated by his own brother to, to get... frame Phoenix to get disbarred. And not only that, because then you realize originally then Christoph was going to be the defense attorney, which means Christoph was going to forge evidence and cheat and to beat it. his brother just to use a, another little like stitch to just, just just further his career. Because if he wanted this career because of you know the Grammaries, they're their famous magicians. And he wanted to use this to further his career. So his his own younger brother's very first case as a prosecutor. He was going to manipulate the the case to make him lose. Just, just so to, just to further his own career, his own personal interest, use his own brother. And Clavier obviously looks up to his brother. Like you get hints of that. Well, that he and, looked up to him. He and, trusts him. And when he, when he finds out when that comes out, and he you can see that he's upset. But you can see it in his face, and you could see he's upset about this because whenever he asks. Asks, um, Apollo, like he's just like, where did you get that? And like, and you realize he immediately suspects, like where Apollo like learns this information from, like all about that past case and what it was tied to in that case, Phoenix, and and he realized just how used he was, and you see that distress in his face. But then the game quickly glosses over it, and then it goes back into the case, and then there's another moment where Clavier even questions his brother, like. That was supposed to be our, you promised me we were going to have an honest case. You and me, like, honestly giving it our best. Brother to brother, man to man. It like, was... like, but it was going to be both of our best efforts. And, like, it, you used me. Like, but then again, it, the game quickly glosses it over. And it just, the, I want to love Clavier because he does have a lot of potential. Yeah, and it's the potential that I really like, but the actual execution in the game felt so... Lackluster. It was half-baked, everything. And it was just... And this is why he's my least favorite, and both of our least favorites, is not because he's evil. It's not because he's bad. And it's not because he's, like, a horrible character or anything. And he's not even horribly written. He, but everything about him is so lukewarm. Yeah, he's, he's a very... Eh, kind and of, it like, really... Written. It's just... And this is something that really annoyed me, because I, I didn't actually think... I, I didn't think about this while I played Apollo Just. It was only afterwards, where I was really sort of breaking down and analyzing Clavier's character, that I realized there wasn't a lot to him. And I'm like, 
that's why I never liked him that much. And in fact, one of the most interesting things from him is actually in, in, Dual, Destiny. in Dual Destinies when you when he shows up for mainly a cameo because it's supposed to be him. It was, a, it was a cute little cameo. Yeah, and I liked the whole scenario because it was him and Phoenix, right? We're supposed to come. To yeah, the, they were going to come to this um this uh these uh this academy. The Th Themis Academy. Yeah, Themis Academy, and um. It was a mock trial, wasn't it? Yeah, a mock trial because it's a school that teaches young kids about like the law, law. Uh, kids that are going to want to like seriously go into it when they later go to a university. And you know they thought, hey, we'll have a mock trial here. We'll have the famous prosecutor, it'll be Clavier Gavin, and have famous defense attorney Phoenix Wright. And there was going to be this whole presentation that they were going to give. So you meet um, Gav uh, Clavier Gavin there, and he and does he have cute interactions with Athena. Like he immediately gets along with Athena, and then you just see P Apollo getting progressively more irate. And that moment made sense of Apollo being more irate because it's just Clavier being his usual charming it's self, like, it's and like, Athena is immediately enamored with. Oh it. my gosh, it's Clavier. Like, Gavin. oh, because he, he even, she's just like, can I have your autograph? And Apollo's like, you don't even know who he was until two seconds ago, and now you want his, like, he's just, like, so fed up. Like, well, like then it made sense. And, and it then was, it was really funny when he calls out Apollo for liking Athena, and he's like, no, she's just a member of the... She, she's the newest member of the Right Anything Agency, that is all. So you hesitated. So, yeah. You hesitated. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was like... Oh, so I see. She's your type, huh? Air, air forehead. And like, and I was just like, man, he's got the beat on him. It's like, but that was funny because he was being nice and charming, but he was also being really friendly with Apollo as opposed to being antagonistic. But, they, eh, kind of antagonistic, where he's just like. Eh. He was. He was being more playful with him, but you know, you can see that. But you were kind of seeing a little bit more of a personality out yeah. of him. And because they weren't, they weren't trying to make him be hostile and friendly at the same time. They went with the friendly, but with a little bit of teasing. Kind of like, you know, you get with Edgeworth and Phoenix. Edgeworth will do something, but then he'll he'll, he'll drop a little jab at Phoenix. But not, but not so pompous. Yeah, not pompous. So you kind of you got a little bit more of that. And I would like to see him come back at some point and do something and have more of a role in a story where he has more personality. And it's just a shame. It's like, it's like when he said, like, Athena and Black Wool is where they did it right. It's yeah. where they take the prosecutor and the new defense attorney character and interweave their stories together. Yeah. There was so much going on in Apollo Justice, it's almost like they like realized, oh crap. Um, he, it was clever, you almost felt like a side note. Like the yeah. afterthought, like in, in the story, because there was so much going on, and it's a good story and so much going on, but yeah, the story there. is all about Apollo. It's about Kristoff and, and about Phoenix. Phoenix. And, and, and the Grammaries, and so much, and especially so much about the mystery of Phoenix's disbarment, and, and, it, and even though even though Clavier there. was the attorney that was, or the prosecutor, well, yeah, that the was prosecuting a, attorney, yeah, you know, during the time when during the case where he got, pro, you know, disbarred, it, it it's made all about Kristoff rather than you know Clavier, and it. I will say the time in Apollo Justice where he was the most interesting, barring those few snippets of a moment where I'm like, oh, there's there's some interestingness to a character in there was um, actually the flashback case from Phoenix's point of view because then you get a young Clavier, he's 17, upcoming, so he's he's cocky. So he's actually showing more of a personality back then. Granted, yes, he's a teenager, but still, it was kind of interesting to see Clavier actually, like, he wanted to really prove himself to Phoenix, in, even though his brother told him, oh, yeah, this this attorney, he's a horrible person, he's, he's going to cheat, he's going to bring fraudulent evidence, but at the same time, it was, Clavier was really trying to prove himself, even though he's like, I may be young, I may be an upcoming attorney, he's like, but, he's like, I'm going to show you all that, like, I'm going to win, he's like, and I'm right, and all this other stuff, and so, like, so that was kind of interesting to see that, I mean, granted, again, not enough of it, but it was nice to see a little bit of that side yeah, of him. Yeah, and speaking of him in the court, him in, like, a lot of times where a lot of these, you know, prosecutors shine is in the courtroom, where you see Edgeworth, his ultra-pompous attitude in the first game. And Francisca, so smart, always showing up Phoenix. Yeah, and then you have Francisca's fool and whipping people left and right. And then, <laughs> so over the top. Then you have um, Goddard in his coffee obsession, guzzling coffee down. Or everybody, oh, we forgot to mention. Yeah, he throws, he throws the, the coffee cup at Phoenix's face. When he gets mad, it's like, yeah, so you have that, and then you get to... And his dumb you, metaphors, yeah. and, and Black Will, need we say more? Yeah, we talked about that, but then you get to Clavier, and I was, you and I talked about this specifically, he doesn't do much in the court. 
even his um, animation, the only thing remotely interesting was his air guitar where he's like... Da -da -da. I mean, he did get the interesting slam one where instead of the desk, yeah. it was like, you know, yeah. the wall behind him. It's a little bit more flashy and dramatic to, like, make him look cooler. And he does have a lot of ideas that make him look cool. Yeah. But he's just so wishy-washy kind of. Thing. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I did say, I think I've talked about this with other characters where it's like they, they want to... They want to make them, you know, likable, but they don't want them to be, you know, too likable. So they give them a few traits of being mean, a few traits of being nice, but then they end up almost canceling each other out. I feel like they wanted to recreate Edgeworth, but the problem is, is they were trying to recreate everything about Edgeworth. Here's a character, he's yeah. cool, and he's suave, and he's handsome, and oh, he, but he cares about the truth. But he also can talk down to the defense, but... Where was that character development? Yeah, you know, and that, that's just it. It's like they were trying to combine... It's, it's, it's like Edward's greatest hits, except also he's a rock star? Yeah. Yeah, you know, now that you say that, you know, that's actually what it really feels like. They wanted to have... Because that's something that really bugged me about him not being hostile enough, was that he cared about the truth way too quickly. Like, at least Edgeworth, you can see that he was being sort of, you know, haughty about, you know, well, losing. Even whenever it looked like... Phoenix was going to turn it around and prove his defendant was innocent, even in later games after character development happened for Edgeworth. Edgeworth was still out of it and would just go for it because if that's what Edgeworth believes. He's like, a prosecutor must absolutely give it their all and believe 100% in like their case, whereas the defense attorney is supposed to believe 100% in their case, and they, and they the keep butting heads, and eventually the truth. the truth comes out, and that's when the judge makes his call. So that there's not a single doubt that you got the truth. It's like, and so that's why Edgeworth will still give it his all and still try to make counterpoints and knock P Phoenix down a peg or two. And I was like, but Clavier, the moment it starts to get closer and it realizes, oh, this person didn't actually do it, he starts to back off a bit and he's like all chill about it. And you can argue that makes him interesting because, of, hey, we've never seen a prosecutor like that before. But the problem is, is he's not interesting, not that memorable. You could make a laid back prosecutor. But still make them memorable. You just got to make them really quirky. Well, yeah. Like, um, like for the fact that he's a rock star, you really could have go, gone all in with that. Like, I mean, first, crying out loud, one of his catchphrases is Akpoon, baby. Yeah. Which is, that's a title of a YouTube song. Like, like you know, a band. Like, you could have had him referencing a whole lot of bands or band songs. Like, yeah, constantly yeah. pepper all his phrases with nothing but that. Yeah. Or make him, like, you know... Like, uh, I told you about this. Like, yeah. one of the characters I love in Rock the Sadie Bug, he's a side character, Jagged Stone. He's a yeah. rock star. He's a nice, laid-back guy, just like Clavier. But the humor about Jagged Stone is, is he's kind of out of touch with reality. He, he's he's a rock star, so he's he's used to living the rock star lifestyle. But he's naive. He's naive. So if someone brings in the concept of, it's like the, you know, the, um, was it Mariah Carey was asked about electricity bills? And she's like, what's a bill? And it's like, that, that's what Jagged Stone is like. But he's funny because he's a nice guy. Yeah, he but... is a nice guy, but he's just naive and ignorant. And he just, you know, he's out of touch with reality. And I'm like, you could have had Clavier been like that. Like a funny rock star guy, but he's you, he's nice. He believes in the truth, but he's also out of touch. With, well, like... and I know one of the things that you suggested was particularly just little um, sprite animations that would have made him more interesting are things like maybe a fan comes in the middle of the court case and he's like signing autographs. Yeah, he just signs autographs well, randomly. Then, or then there, randomly like... there's paparazzi coming to yeah, take and his he, picture. Yeah, and he'd be like posing. He's like, pose, pose. Oh, they take pictures. I actually got that idea from when I was re-watching some more Kim Possible. And there's this character. She's just like a two-shot villain. She's only appeared in two episodes in season four. Her name is Camille Leon. She's voiced by Ashley Tisdale. <laughs> but, um, but she's, like, basically a knockoff of Paris Hilton. Like, it's, it's supposed to be their par like their parody of, of her. But she's, like, always talking about, like, oh, life's so hard being famous. And she's, like, and you can never go anywhere without, like, people always hounding you for their attention. And then suddenly the, all these pop rots come out of nowhere. And then she immediately strikes a pose. And they're, like, all snapping her picture. And it'll happen without random. She's, like, tell me about it. She's, like, it's so hard being me. Poses as people snap her picture. And it happens all the time. Even in, like, the second episode she appears, they're on the other side of another country in the middle of a villain's hideout. And she's just like, Kim even disguises herself as her, like, to get in. 
And she's just like, she's not Chameleon. She's like, I'm the real Chameleon. She strikes pose and a bunch of paparazzi takes a picture. And then Kim jokingly is like, um, she's like, um, really? I think I'm the real deal. And then a bunch of paparazzi come around Kim and then take her picture. Like, so they were utilizing that joke. And that's when I thought that joke. And I'm like, that would be really funny if that was just something randomly Clavier would do in the court. Like, he's just randomly like, it's just so hard being famous. Strikes a pose and then a bunch of paparazzi come to take his picture. Or like, yeah. you just have his fangirls in the crowd, like just constantly screaming or something. Yeah. And you know, then you, you really go full out with the rock star and have every other you know animation he does be related to him. Being a or you could have made star. boy band jokes. I mean, heck, they they could have made a, like a bunch of references to like Backstreet Boys and yeah. Sync or something, or even Justin Timberlake. You know, th that would be hilarious if he came into a court for like another case and be like, "Gavin's back, all right." <laughs> <And> just like, <laughs> you know, you can make so many jokes with that. There, there's so much potential to make jokes. I mean, he makes some jokes, but none of them are memorable enough and not enough of them like you really could have gone all in with this whole rock star gimmick like he should be the funniest and most memorable because the fact that one of them is a rock star is absolutely and, and he cares hilarious. more about being like, that would actually be you know, him being out of touch would actually really explain his lack of care for being a prosecutor he's smart enough to just become a prosecutor at, a, at 17 but he cares but, more about but he cares hobby. more about being a band because to him being a rock star is more important than be prosecuting, which would explain his more lax attitude towards things, because you see this with some other prosecutors. You could like, randomly having uh, him jump up on the bench and thinking it's like it's time for a concert, and he's like, yeah. he's like, yeah. Yeah, and then then you have like strobe lights and like you know spotlights on him as he's like, and it follows just like. When did they set this up? <laughs> you know, that'd be hilarious if he thought he was, like, there was a case where he thought he was going to win, but then he jumps up and starts celebrating, and then they're like, no, you didn't win, and then... And then he's just like, whatever, puts on shades, and then suddenly, like, disco ball, and, like, lights, and it's like a rave, and then yeah. Trissy's just like, sweet, and she pulls out a glow stick out of nowhere, and Apollo's like, what is going on? That would have been hilarious. Like, if stuff like that happened during the court cases, it doesn't matter what else was going on with the, with Gavin's character. If he, if that was his, if the court cases were that crazy, that would have just been amazing. And I know that, that it could have been done, because if we do have a laid-back prosecutor, Gatto, he was very laid back. He was the previous pro, you know, prosecutor, yeah. and he's extremely memorable. And, and and he didn't. Okay, okay, yeah, he became the antagonist, like the legit antagonist. But I still think you could have had just just the rival, not the antagonist, and have him be memorable. I mean, I made my own character for my fanfic, who's a prosecutor, who is probably the most chilled, laid back character yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah, and. Every review so far of the third chapter of my fanfic, nearly almost every single one, everybody's commented on how much they love this prosecutor that I've created. He's like this, just this prosecutor. His name is Tex Hoshin. Exhaustion. Yuck, yuck. But his shtick is that he's always tired all the time, and all he wants to do is sleep, and he doesn't care about his job. He just wants to nap. So he's got like a full-on like sleeping bag that he'll zip all the way to the top, and he'll be in the middle of like of like the court case and he'll just jump up on the prosecutor bench and he'll zip up his sleeping bag and he'll fall right asleep and everyone's like um you're supposed to be awake and he's just like no 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 it's the cross examination the fence has got this like but he just so is nonchalant and does not care about anything and it's hilarious and like even whenever like a, my my fic apollo and athena win their case and he's just like that's nice i'm going to bed now and then he just like falls back to asleep and then, 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 then phoenix is sitting there in the gallery like why did this man become a prosecutor? It's like, who is this guy? Yeah. Do you care? Well, you know, that's just it with, um, it's like, you, you can do that if you take it to the extreme. You have to crank everything up to 11. Because it's Ace Attorney. You have to be ridiculous. And, you know, another thing that really would have worked with this character is if, is if, you know, he was actually really trying to defend his brother at the end. Like, what if he was in denial that, that Kristoff actually did anything? That, what, what if he actually developed, like, a hatred of Phoenix because he thought that Phoenix was, had lied to get well, Kristoff arrested? There's, there's a lot of implications with Clavier. Like, there's an implication that he's always suspected that there was something foul that went on, but he was too afraid to ever confront the truth, which almost makes his whole reasoning of, like, backing off whenever you know, it turns out something, the truth has happened, almost contradictory, which is fascinating. Because then it's like, oh, because one, that's the case that he first prosecuted, and that would have meant that it was his fault, but two, that also meant that he was completely duped by his own family, his flesh and blood, yeah. someone he trusts. 
and that would be a truth that he'd be very afraid to confront. So that would be very fascinating to have a character who cares about the truth, is afraid to confront a personal truth. Right, but yeah. But th there's only implications of it, though, in the game. It's never really full-on out stated. Like, I mean, like, Clavier did drop a line, like, I remember, I think it was in the final case, where he's saying something to the effect that he's always suspected, like, something like this was the case, but he never really looked into it because he didn't want to know. Yeah, and that would actually have been great if he if you crank it up to 11. You have him defend Kristoff. Like, no, my brother was innocent. He was wrongly incarcerated by Phoenix Wright. Like, you really go full on with that because he, he doesn't want to admit, even if he suspected something was wrong, he didn't, he was so he adored his brother that he couldn't admit that his brother was, you know, the bad guy until the truth fully comes out and he has to face the truth. Like, that would have been more interesting, and I really would have cared about uh, Clavier's character if he really had to have face that hard truth that Kristoff was actually evil. And but it's like, we but didn't. we never got that, and they kind of skim over any of it. And like you said, I, it's just I implications. Get it. I get it, because it, it's Apollo's game, and this is also all about Phoenix's mystery, but the fact that Clavier's tied to that mystery, I feel like he should get a little more attention to at least how he feels about all of it. Yeah. He's never really allowed to express himself. He's just, eh, look at me. I'm the, I'm the cool rock star. Yeah, in... and so, but at the same time, not in a funny way. I'm like, if you're, if you're not going to be deep in Ace Attorney, you're funny. Yeah. <laughs> Ace Attorney is either really, really hardcore, really deep at times, or it is just over the top, nonsensical, ridiculous. It's it's one or the other. It's never half and half unless your name is Clavier Gavin. Yeah. And he's so so diet Edgeworth, honestly. Yeah. And it's like, and then of course his main gimmick is so underutilized. It, you might as well not even have made him a rock star if if there's only one case where this even means anything, which is the case with with his band. Mm-hmm. And. And that's just ultimately why I would put him at the bottom of the list of all the prosecutors. Oh, and then there's the fact that he's not even actually from Germany. He studied in Germany law. So all of his All his little hair, forehead, hair right, and um, an uh, uh, thumb, baby, and, and, and like Fräulein's detective and stuff like that. Like, he's not even German. Like, he just speaks it because if he was in the country and... He just become, became so enamored with it. I can't remember if it was either some other extended material or if it was like the jokingly DLC case Ask Night Attorney for Spirit of Justice. I can't remember. One, one other supplementary or extra material basically poked fun at it and like had somebody refer to him as a Europhile, which is basically, as people call him, they call him the European weeaboo. And, you know, that actually would have been really... Because, you know, and then you with that, you you miss the great opportunity of having it interact with Francesca, who is German, and you could have her... You know hate she would hate him. Hate you him. know she would. She would hate him because he's fake German. Because she could speak flawless German, but then he comes in there and says, Yeah, Fräulein, and then that's ja, all... Ja, Fräulein. And that's all, he, that's all he knows. He doesn't understand anything. And also the fact that he's the one who was... He's the prosecutor when Phoenix who got disbarred. Dethroned, like the legit beat be Phoenix. Like, like she would be furious at that you robbed me of my opportunity. Like that case with Matt on guard, Phoenix wanted to lose that case. Though this is a legit Phoenix lost a case for the first time. And it's this flippant little rock star guy who's 17 years was he was 17 years old. And just and he's, his, I know his personality would rub her the wrong way, too. Yeah. it's And it's like, man, that would, if you had someone, like, if, if you're not going to have him be interesting, have the characters he's interacting with have interesting reactions. Because, and Francesca interacting with him would be Because there are hilarious. some characters like that in a lot of media, where I'm like, you know, I realize when the characters by themselves, they're not strong enough to hold their own, like the audience's attention, but you put that character with a bunch of other characters, and suddenly it creates a lot of really fun and funny interactions yeah so yeah then that, that and then the other more interesting characters can make for, up for the more lacking parts of that character and that's G gavin really could have used that but the characters that he interacts with are oftentimes the straight men of the normal lunacy like phoenix and apollo 
they act as the straight man to the funny man of everyone else. But, I granted they're both a bunch of dumb dumbs too. Right, you know, but <laughs> but you know, but they're not as wacky as other characters. If you had him interacting with, that's Moral. what made it so great. Is whenever he showed up in Dual Destinies for that little bit, because of and that interaction with Apollo and Athena was great. Because of, is because Athena can be a little bit wacky. She's not exactly the straight man. No. <laughs> Yes. And, and it, it was funny, and because of he, like, was encouraging her wackiness, kind of, that made Apollo just get pricklier, as it were. And, and, that, and, that, and that, in turn, made a funnier interaction from with Apollo, because of then it made Apollo just like a, like a porcupine. Well, that's really one of the reasons why I think that that appearance, even if it's short, even if it's just a cameo, that was one of my favorite appearances, because he, of the characters he got to play off of. Particularly Athena. It was it was actually really funny. Like just like that just that whole little scenario was just a really funny moment, and it was a cute little fan service moment. And oh, I wish they utilized so much with Clavier. There's a lot you can do with Clavier. I have yeah. so many plans. I'll never divulge any of my plans for my fanfic. But but you know, it's like yeah, there's a lot of stuff they could have done with him, but they just he's didn't. got so much potential to be honestly probably one of the best prosecutors, and it hurts me. <laughs> That he just, he was kind of having it. I mean, I guess because of the fact that Apollo Justice had so much going on. There was a really some... complicated plot with all surrounding Phoenix going on with there that he just kind of some, thought... Was... Something had to hit the chopping block. And sadly, it was the prosecutor who's supposed to be one of the biggest highlights of Ace Attorney. Right, that's something that the original trilogy establishes. A new prosecutor every game that has some sort of gimmick to it. And they've, it's weird because they were, they've been strong since Apollo Justice. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, whenever Black Will came in, like, Black Will just Black Will blew bl the door off the hinges. Yeah, and then Neyuta, at the very least, was oh, a very strong character. He was extremely memorable. Sure, for the majority of the game, I hated him until I realized, oh, well, I actually like him now in hindsight. But, but even then, I would consider that very successful, but, you know. But he had, a, and even Neyuta is not a very strong, bombastic personality. He's got a very low-key personality, too. But he was such a memorable personality. and just... it, it was because of what he was low-key about. Oh, yeah. And, and, and because of what he was high-key. Like, he was like, he would lose it when it would came, come to his, like, the religious stuff. And he was like... When... And he was very... <laughs> It was like, he was he was obviously by design intended to ruffle your feathers and rub you the wrong way. Like but Clavier was not. He just... <laughs> Yeah. How can I sum up Clavier? <laughs> and I hate that, because I really do. Like, I replayed Apollo Justice uh, six months ago, because I, want, I was, like, desperately trying to look in there, and I'm like, no, there's a good character in there. Everybody keeps insisting it, and then I keep thinking to myself, it's because he's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be real, it's because he's a handsome guy, that's why most people like him, and people are like, but he's got such a cool song! Like, yes, his song is memorable! More memorable than him. He is not. <laughs> and that's and that's really what makes him so, like, puts him on the bottom of the list. I mean, contrast, potential... that, contrast that to Francesca. Francesca's prosecutor theme is not memorable. She is very memorable. I would rather the character be memorable than their music. Yeah. The music is the icing on the cake. Yeah. And, you know, you know, so, so you know, Francisco is a strong character that you really like. And then Clavier is, he's all flash. That, that, his character, the way he's written, all flash, no substance, which... As Emma Sky herself would put it, he's just a glimmerous bop. And, I, and I'm like, or he could have made him really dumb. Like, if they made him dumb, like, that would have been hilarious. Like, think about it. There's a lot of if, movie if he was stars. Like, if he was, like, a Derek Zoolander. Like, like a <laughs> lot of movie stars who are really stupid. Like, you'll see, like, I've seen it before, like, the top d dumbest, tw top 20 dumbest quotes you've ever heard from celebrities. And I can think of several off the top of my head. Quite a few of them coming from Britney Spears and Jessica Simpson. And I was like, but, like... Like, there are so many dumb things you've heard celebrities say, and I'm like, you could have had it, and I don't mean just out of touch, like, I mean just, like, just dumb as a sack of rocks. Like, and the fact that, like, what if you had a character who's not only a rock star, but he's dumb as a sack of rocks, and somehow he's a prosecutor? And it's like, that would be the greatest mystery. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Apollo would just be sitting here like, how did this man become a lawyer? 
Male, male models make the greatest prosecutors, but why male models? It's <laughs> like, because aren't we beautiful to look at? <laughs> like, and then, then, then you have to make the joke of, like, ah, his fame. His fame is probably the reason that he's just simply got his, like, his prosecutor badge. Yeah, it's like, but that's the thing, is that you have to take these quirks, and you have to go full speed with them to make sure that they stick out. Because... Oh, the, the other tragedy of him is... He was a, like, like I said, you see a different side of him in the flashback case when he was the arrogant little 17-year-old just wanting to prove himself to the world. Then flash forward seven years later, and then that's when we meet the very chill, laid-back Clavier. Granted, he was still a bit chill when he was a teenager, but he was still, that arrogance wasn't quite there. I mean, it was a little bit there, but mostly when it came to his music, not to his prosecuting. Yeah. And... What, what and changed? We, we were robbed of those seven years, even though it made sense for the story... Because that's the whole mystery of what happened seven years ago. Like that's the, the the sad thing is, is we never got to see this evolution. Granted, kind of a boring evolution. <laughs> well, but even then, if there was an understandable reason why he was more chill and laid back and wasn't nearly as arrogant, I would be more interested. If we got to learn more about him as a character, that would have made up for some like, of. Like, what if we got this? What if we got another Miles Edgeworth investigation games, but it takes place post Phoenix's disbarment? Because I remember there was a post about that, and Edgeworth is trying to like help Phoenix solve the mystery of what happened. Yeah. And so it's a game that takes place the course over of all that, but then Edgeworth at the meantime is solving other cases. But what if, in that game, instead for Edgeworth investigations partner, a young Clavier Gavin? And so then you have Edgeworth mentoring Clavier. That would actually be a really good, like, it, and that would actually open up a lot of stuff that you could do with his character if you had him basically... I mean, since he's Diet Edgeworth anyway, why not have a game that shows, okay, make it so the reason why he's such Diet Edgeworth is simply because of Miles Edgeworth was a huge positive well, influence Well, on and him. They, they could even do stuff to evolve his character a bit, because one of the things that I noticed with um, Apollo Justice was that in Apollo Justice... Apollo felt like a Phoenix light. He, he did. You know, he it, it's it's like, like I always. He did have his moments in the game. Yeah, he too. had his moments. He had his grumpy moments, but he a lot of it felt like stuff that Phoenix would be doing in the original trilogy, and it just felt like, why would you take Phoenix away if you're just going to give us a character that was similar to Phoenix, but with dual destinies and a spirit of justice, especially bringing in the Athena, Apollos really you, come into his yeah. Own. They they really kind of focus on him being the the grumpy realist, especially playing off of Athena being the hyperactive. But optimist. it also plays in perfectly to Apollo Justice because then you realize why he could have been the grumpy realist, not just because of well the death of his best friend and dual destinies, but also because of at the time because you even saw little tiny shades of it in Apollo Justice. Not a lot of it, but tiny shades of this um, this jaded attitude because of his pedestal that Phoenix was put on was completely broken. Because you notice a stark difference between Apollo's attitude towards Phoenix from the very first case to post the very first case. Yeah. And even then, you also have his mentor, Kristoff, having been a psychopath. And then... And then he realizes that he gets... He, got, he basically ended up jobless. And then... Then the saving grace, his hero, Phoenix Wright, comes and takes him in under his wing, but, and but, then he ends but, up... But at the same time, he's lost his respect for Phoenix yeah, at that point. Yeah, and then he gets taken in, and then... But he's will... slowly building his respect back with Phoenix, and by the time of Dual Destinies, it's practically restored, because of whenever because... you play that DLC case, Paul talks about how exciting it is to see Phoenix with his badge back again. Right, because now he's seeing him as the hero he always looked up to again, but not the, not just the hobo Phoenix. But at the time, you know, we realize, okay, but now Apollo knows he put Phoenix on this really high pedestal that Phoenix that Phoenix can't live up to, and then so now he's like, you got to know Phoenix. So, but it's like so they actually tied that into Apollo's character, and it, and it really works. And there, you can do stuff like that with Clavier. If the, even if you can bring him in in another game, you can give him a flashback case to flesh out the time between the 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 two trilogies. Then you you can bring him in another or time. Or heck, bring back Kristoff. And then, yeah. then that'd be the perfect way to bring back Clavier and like really emphasize Clavier's character. Like, what if Kristoff had some big diabolical revenge scheme well, against well, Phoenix? And what, what, what if it was going to be like Morgan's revenge scheme in Trials and Tribulations? Yeah, but it's, a, but, but but then it's, it's it, against Apollo uh, and Phoenix. Like, he wants to get back at both of them. 
And then you have, you know, you know, Clavier having to come in and basically wanting to redeem his family name to do good when his brother had done bad. So that way you actually get more character. I mean, it's so it blows my mind because there's so many like And I want more interactions yeah. actually with Clavier and Phoenix because of what happened. And I know Phoenix obviously is like, eh, bygones, bygones. Everybody right. he, he makes... knows that it was all Kristoff being manipulative. But at the same time, I feel like I, I want to see that interaction because I want Clavier to be like, hey, um, my bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, it's cool. It's you wanted, a... you want to join the never-ending school of all my adoptive children? <laughs> yeah. Your brother, you, your family's not dead, I don't think, but I can still. <laughs> and then Chris, like, like, he's like, your family's not dead, but then Clavier's like, Chris, dead, dead to me. To me. <laughs> It's like, man, no, it's just talking about this, there's so much you can do with Clavier's character, and it just... There's a lot you can do. The fact that you could have done anything with Clavier's character, literally anything, and all we got was... Uh, just a couple moments in the entirety of the whole game that stuck out as even remotely having personality, and... And he never evolved as a character. You know, that's just it. He never evolved. Yes. He, from the beginning of the game to the end, he doesn't change. Edward changes. Francisca changes. Blackwell changes. Neuda changes. Goddard changes. You know, but Clavier never... Or if, or if they didn't quite change, you realize, oh, they're, they're, they're... They're, they're, your perspective of them had changed. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, um... With Clavier, or like with, with Goddard and... With Goddard, and with Neuda. Well, even Blackwell. Blackwell, yeah. So it's like, so you can have those changes in perspective, but you never got anything of that from Clavier. And it's like, the more you talk about it, the more it's clear that what happened with him wasn't because the ideas were bad, it's because they didn't do enough with them. Or they, did, they just didn't really settle on an idea. You pick an idea and you settle with it. Yeah. Like, even if you decided, hey, let's make him a big fat jerk... Make him a big Go guy. all in. If you want him to be, like, the chill, funny guy, go all in. Like, don't half it. You want him to be a rock star? Don't have his rock star stuff be almost superficial. Have him be rock star prosecutor, man. And like, then, just, you know. Go all in. Because if he does have a fantastic song. He's got a fantastic design. The fact that he's tied into probably one of the best villains in Ace Attorney is just rife with potential for story. And, I mean, I think the other problem with it is he doesn't have much of a dynamic with Apollo. Yeah. Like, um, Phoenix and Edgeworth, there's that perfect rivalry dynamic. You've obviously got Athena and Blackwell. There's a perfect dynamic there because of their history. And you have Nayuta and Apollo actually have a much more proper dynamic. Even when I hated Nayuta, I felt more like, like, okay, this is a more proper attorney, like, and prosecutor dynamic, like, yeah. like as rivals, like, it just even when I hated Nayuta at the time, and I'm even, like, even, like, even Francisca has that with, with both Edgeworth and, and Phoenix. Phoenix, like, like there's so, there's a dynamic there, and with Clavier, it's not really there because people claim that it is, but I'm like, not really. Sure, he teases Apollo, but. And Apollo can't stand him, but he also teases Emma, and Emma can't stand him. There's not really exactly a dynamic there. Yeah. Just she can't stand him. That's it. That, that That's all there is to it. There's there's no tying to Clavier and Apollo. Like, there's ties to, like, you'll notice a lot of the prosecutors and attorneys have a tie to something. Well, and it's really weird because um, Apollo could have had a tie if he took it personally that Clavier was the prosecutor that got Phoenix disbarred. Or the what fact he... that it was mentioned briefly because of Clavier makes a joke saying like I'm used to women staring at me all the time. I'm not used to a, a to a to a guy staring at me. And the reason Apollo is staring at him is because of it. Just did, like Apollo, just like he looks so much like he his looks brother. so much like Kristoff. Like, and it's what, just what, like, if, what if Apollo was the one who was unreasonably hostile? Yeah, he could have been unreasonably hostile, but not because of anything Glavier did. But because he so, looks so much like his, his brother. brother. Like and there's, there's and, a lot you could have done with that too. Like you could have created an interesting dynamic. Like it could have been from the fact that Clavier dethroned his hero. It could have been the, from the fact that Clavier is the brother of Kristoff, who again was Apollo's mentor. So that's another person who has a broken pedestal for Apollo. 
It's like, it's like you could have done something, but there's really no tie to it. Like I mean, even Phoenix and Francesca, who don't have history together, their their dynamic comes from the fact that from one Phoenix beat her father, and two Phoenix beat Edgeworth, who Francesca and both aspired of them, to defeat. And both defeat. of them have a connection to Edgeworth. To Edgeworth. So that really ties in when Edgeworth comes back into the story again. So even though mm -hmm. Justice for All didn't exactly have an overarching story, what what flowed and tied that game together was the characters themselves. Yeah. That's what makes it at least... Uh, like, Because some people were like, well, it doesn't have much of a story. It's just a bunch of random cases stringed together. I'm like, well, first off, it has more of the phase, so that gives you more backstory on them. And it gives you more about Edgeworth. And, and, and more about, like, even though you don't see Manfred, but it tells you more about, like, his... A little more about him, even though it's really how he treated his... Like, his daughter and his... his student and you also have the unguard case which a lot of people will agree is probably so one of the best amazing. if not the best case in the series so amazing so yeah i mean at the very least even though it doesn't have an overarching story it has memorable moments and memorable characters yeah and so apollo justice has a fantastic story. it is a very overarching story that has a lot of like deep explanations about what was going on like it is amazing how fantastic the story of Apollo Justice is. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love it. Like, blowing through the game, I was just like, wow, this actually was weird coming off of the original trilogy, which never had as much tying things together, except the for trials, trials, and trials, trials, trials and Tribulations tribulation had a lot of stuff tying together, but, you know, seeing like, this... Like, Apollo Justice went, it was like, it was like Trials and Tribulations, but, like, up to the 11, like, with even more, like, like the overarching stories and how well, everything it, tied together. Even what you thought would be a filler case was the middle case, which was the, the guitar serenade case. No, and then you realize it actually tied all the story because of Apollo and Trucy's long-lost mother. Like, like every detail about that well, game tied something back right, to the story. Especially at the end when you start going to the flashbacks and you get to go between different points in time as Phoenix, it's like, and it's like, amazing. okay, this ties everything together, and yeah, you know, that was that was fantastic. And, and then... And Clavier. Clavier. And Clavier is the one thing that sticks out to me. Because even then, at least with Apollo, he got later games to really develop him, but Clavier never really got much. And Apollo did have his moments in the first game. I mean, his first game. Like, he did have his moments. I will say that, at the very least, unlike Phoenix, Apollo is willing to actually vo vocalize his inner snark. Like, it's like moments where a lot of Apollo's snarky little comments, every single one of those snarky comments would all would have stayed in Phoenix's head. Like, Phoenix always keeps his snark to himself. Because of Phoenix just fears reprimanding from everybody in the courts because they're just not nice to defense attorneys. And they're big memes. I was like, but <laughs> Apollo is actually willing to say it out loud. I'm like, so he does have that going for him. He's a little bit grumpier. And you... They really expanded on that in the later games, which is great because that really makes him far more distinct to Phoenix. And I will say, unlike Phoenix, Apollo desperately, and you did get shades of this in Apollo Justice. You, you saw it more so in later games, but you did see shades of this in Apollo Justice. Apollo desperately wants to be taken seriously. He wants to be perceived as cool. Like, but Phoenix... While he would love for that, Phoenix has just resigned himself to the fact that he's not going to get his respect. <laughs> like, she's just accepted this fact. And it was like, but Apollo desperately wants that recognition. He wants that respect. He wants people to take him seriously, which is, the joke is the fact that he desperately tries so hard and only can, just makes himself look like even more like an idiot or a dork at his moments. And then... That's the joke. So even when he was being Phoenix Light, he at least had a couple of key traits to make him stand out. Clavier... He was Edgeworth Light with an air guitar. <sighs> yeah, I'm just going to start calling him that from now on. Edgeworth Light with an air guitar. <laughs> but, like, uh, But yeah. Yeah, you know, that's it. And, and even his impact wasn't really that big. That, that big. Because even if you, if you completely ignore him past... Apollo Justice, it doesn't really matter. You never. No, because you know. you've got Nayuda and Blackwell. Right, and they, they both blow things out of the water. With... Seriously, especially Blackwell. Good grief, Blackwell's amazing. Yeah. Ugh. I love Blackwell. 
I mean, I love Edgeworth, and I love French. I love Edgeworth, Edgeworth Francisca, and Blackwell are right up there at the top. Top like, tier. It, yeah, it's like the, the 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 difference between them in terms of how much I like them is minimal. They're all they're all great, all three of them. Well, what's so great about Blackwell though too is is like it took him one game to be equal to Francesca. I mean, even though immediately I fell in love with Francesca, but the fact is she also appeared in Trials and Tribulations. She's appeared in both Investigations games. Blackwell had one game and then one case in another game. One short filler case in another game. And he's just immediately so instantly liked by a lot of people. And, and just like and that tells you about the strong writing of the characters in Dual Destinies, mm. especially Blackwell. I almost feel like somebody at Capcom's like, uh, we need a really memorable prosecutor. I mean, okay, yeah, Clavier's got his fangirls, but I mean, does he have his fans? <laughs> Yeah. Like that, that he's like, that would really grab yeah. at people. Like, well, let's let's make a story, but also make the prosecutor central yeah, to I, it. I think they really, the, the Ace Attorney team really learned from the faults of Clavier when it came to designing the prosecutors. That's why both Blackwell and Neyuda are such strong characters. You can make it clear they focused on them as being important and central to the story. Yes, and with strong, memorable and was, personalities and yeah. memorable moments with memorable like little like running gags because every single one of them like we'll say for Manfred but that's because of Manfred is straight up the antagonist like straight up but well then again good out but every single one of them has a memorable little quirk about them like or a running gag at the very least like yeah. uh, the running gag about Clavier is Apollo Air and Emma can't stand him air forehead that's about as far as his like, running gags go. Like, I mean, you have Edgeworth with his little love of steel samurai, the he, fact that he's so stuffy. He can't get anyone, any of the witnesses to do, give their name and op occupation. The fact that, like, he's, you know, like, the comically serious. You have Francesca, the fact that she's so over the top and extra. She whips people. She calls people by their full name. She uses the word fool way too much. Mm. It just... She's so hostile. The, the, the joke, Godot, is that he has weird metaphors. He has an obsession for coffee, and he'll throw coffee in your face. He's got the whole jazzy thing. Like, just jazz, jazz, jazz. The coffee cuff even randomly slides out of nowhere. Yeah. That's just like, and Simon, the fact that he's a wannabe samurai, and the fact that he's like... He's also, a, he's also a psychologist. Yeah, so he's, a, <laughs> he's supposedly a psychologist, but honestly, I would never want to have him as my therapist. <laughs> the fact that he's got a pet hawk, the fact that he openly attacks people. Yeah, he, he, he attacks people without a sword. And yeah, but, but, but somehow it like slices things, and attacks people with his hawk, and he's just, and he's got such a morbid sense of humor. Yeah, and his running gags of always bringing up these possibly made-up inmates that he's been cellmates with. Or he'll, or he'll reference things that he learned about, or the, or the fact that he'll always call jail the clink, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I learned about that in my time in the clink. <laughs> Like, and, just, and, and then Neyuda has his, like, super, like, I am super holy man. And then he has the, the prayer beads, and he's like, ah. And then his, or, or his pomp and his, is almost kind of a joke in a way. Yeah, and the fact that he's 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 praying for them to, like, yeah, like because like, you're, you're, I, you're, I you're, you will go. for your soul. Yeah, and then, of course, burgers. The burgers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... It's like Every one of them has, and not even just one running gag, they'll have multiple running gags going on about all of these characters. Clavier has really just one, two people can't stand him, and oh, he's a rock star. Except... It never really affects much. Not much, and it just, it's so unfortunate because there's a lot. In fact, we could probably stand here all day and probably come up with 20 more things that they could do with Clavier to make him extremely right, memorable. Really, and, and while we have talked about some of the stuff, half of what we've talked about was just off the top of our heads talking about it here because it's so easy. Like, there's such a strong concept behind Clavier that it's so easy to come up with this wacky prosecutor. Like, there's a lot you can do with him, and it's Ace Attorney. With yeah. Ace Attorney... It's, Everything gets cranked up to the 11th. It's just, it's ridiculous. That's that's the whole point of Ace Attorney. Like, the drama is cranked up to the 11th, and the humor is cranked up to the 11th. The ridiculousness is cranked up to the 11th. Like, everything about it has to be over the top. It's about, it's about lawyers in court, so it has to be ridiculous to make up for an inherently boring subject. Well, yeah, and it's not even like, it's not an action game. It's, it's a visual novel. 
Pray, yeah. Like, visual novels are usually used for things like, you know, romance games. Like, when you're trying to romance, like, some characters self-insert yourself with. Instead, it's utilized for courtroom drama and for investigating and, and, crime scenes. Yeah, scene. it's the, the only real, um... Gameplay feature is the 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 mental puzzles of trying to figure it out, and half of those are moon logic puzzles that you need guides for anyway. Like, but it's but it's so fun because it's so ridiculous, and the characters are so memorable and but, so fun. Yeah, everything about it is great. All these characters are great, and the villains are just so spectacularly and di diabolical. Even like the one note villains you get in between each case are also interesting all the sprites that they come up with the different like the way they make everybody come alive in ace attorney and it's so unfortunate because clavier's got a lot going for him he's got a great character design he's got great sprite animations got great music yeah like ed just he's got the great rock star theme and, and he's then... got great concepts great ideas and he's tied to important characters or important cases like Kristoff or the phoenix's disbarment case but he's so... Man. Yeah. But yeah, that's our experience yeah. as Ace Attorney fans. Yeah, and we've talked a lot because there's well, a lot to talk about with the, the prosecutors because there's... They're there's... so wonderful. I love this franchise. Yeah, I love this franchise. I love all the characters. Except Clavier. <laughs> I don't hate him. I don't hate him. You know, and that's what it is. And we want to say, this is when, we said, when I said we get into negatives, this isn't because of... Hate. It's, it's just, just that there's so much that's it's just so a, better. It's just a disappointment that Clavier wasn't as good as he could have been to be up because if he if he was a more interesting, he could have been up there with Blackwell and Francisca and Edgeworth well, if they took advantage of his concept and actually did stuff with him. Well it's like this. You have a plain piece of white bread. Sure, I mean it's plain. You'll still eat it, because, yeah, you 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 can be hungry, but all it is is just plain old white bread. There's nothing much special about it. Now, if you had toast, maybe you get a little bread with the, it's all toasty now, and then you can have butter, you can and have jam, jam, you can have put garlic on it. There's all different things. You put cheese, There's you can turn it into a sandwich. There's so many different things you can do with something as simple as bread. And all the other prosecutors... They're, they're toast with butter and jam. They're your garlic breads. They're the cheese. They're French toast. They're, yeah. yeah, they're French toast. They're sandwiches. Clavier is just plain old white bread. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a really good way to put it. It's just there's not anything done with his character. But you could turn that yeah. white bread into something amazing. They don't. <laughs> he, he could have been garlic toast, but alas. But alas. Garlic <laughs> toast that you eat at a rave. <laughs> yeah. But alas. But alas. Yeah, I really think that kind of sums it all up. I think we... Yeah, I think we exhausted all our options here. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Speaking of which, I made myself hungry. You, uh, you, 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 you hungry. All right, out. I'll finish this up. So if you want to submit a topic to me, you can comment below if you're on YouTube or if you're on Tumblr. You can send me an ask and do topic colon and then whatever topic you want me to talk about. Just make sure to follow the rules that I'll be posting down below. If you want to watch last week's topic video, you can check that out here. If you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here when I get that done. So if there's anything else you want to talk about, anything you want to talk about with the prosecutors or any other comments you want to make, just make sure to comment down below. And thank you for watching.